all poems inspired of God and written by Apostle Anatha. Now this book of poetry I'm dedicating to two of the most beautiful women in my life. The first is Vera, who is my lovely wife. And then the most precious other woman in the world is my mother, Gracie Nathaniel Bonner. I dedicate this book of poetry to you both. These are poems about my love for Father God. How great is true love. A love from within. God's love poem. To God I give thanks. Our second chapter. My finest earthly blessing is. Your beauty naturally spiritual. My beautiful rose. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. On account of your love. Third chapter, the glory of birth is, what is a mother, a father's glory, except ye come as a little child, a precious heritage. Fourth chapter, heart comforting words are, words that comfort, message of hope, lifted in glory, I'm gone home, it's all right to cry, words that mean so much. Fifth chapter, the leader's goal. I have a dream to follow the leader, the job of a foreman, black history poem, black women on the move. I had a dream. Sixth chapter, maximize your potential, optimum potential that is. Success, sacrifice, because I'm a winner, make the most of your day. Chapter one, to appropriate his love. How great is true love to you, one might say, to know and understand of this very precious way. Does this love occur when things are going well, when the two of you are agreeing and the children behaving swell? Does this love occur when friends are together, going here, going there, no matter what the weather, Or does this love just occur when things come about, like death or a tragedy that seems to bring it out? But my definition of this great love started in the beginning of time, when God created the human being in his image and after their kind, and gave to him a female companion and said, replenish my earth. But when they failed to keep his commandment, and unable to reach that perfection. This wonderful God sent his only son to show his love and affection. Since that time he has been there, when and where you need him, when your families are gone and your friends do you wrong and no one seems to need you. For the Bible says there is no greater love that a man will lay down his life for a friend. So I would say unto you this day, that's how great true love is. True love. A love from within. For many years I have been searching with my heart, trying to fit in with the crowd. Doing what pleased them and doing what pleased me, but my heart yet with a frown trying things that I knew was wrong just for the sake of something to do. Living in a world of sin and fantasy, trying to make my dreams come true. Adding to my life, along with its own tribulations, trials, and more sorrows. With each day seeming to be closing in on me and my hope fading of tomorrow. Only to come to 
the crossroad of my life, to know a definite change be made. Then my eyes were open and my heart agreed. That I searched for was searching for me. I opened the door and I let him in. His name is Jesus, my love from within. God's love poem. Psalms 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Psalms 34 and 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Psalms 40 and 8, I delight to do thy will, O oh, my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 49 and 4, I will open my dark saying. I will incline my ear to a parable and open my dark saying upon the heart. Psalm 63 and 4, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands to thy name. Psalm 76 and 10, Sunday the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. God's love poem. Psalm 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 24 and 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Psalms 40 and 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, yea, Thy law is within my heart. Psalm 49 and 4, I would incline my ear to a parable. I would open my dark saying upon the heart. Psalm 63 and 4, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Psalm 76 and 10, Sunday the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Psalm 127 and 4, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Psalm 119 and 142, thy righteousness and everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Psalm 116 and 1, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Psalm 108 and 3, I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. And I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. God's love for me. To God I give thanks. To God I give thanks for just another day. For my health and strength and for the words that I can say. To God I give thanks for the sun and the rain. For the activity of my limbs and being able to feel pain. To God I give thanks for the food I'm to eat. Over the water I am to drink, and the place I am to sleep. To God I give thanks for the place that I stay, for the light and gas, and for Him providing the way. To God I give thanks for my family and friends, for those I am around, and for those who are kin. To God I give thanks for the sunlight rays, to know the future holds much brighter days. To God I give thanks for every opportunity that comes to let him know that I'm thankful for each and every one. To God I give thanks. Chapter 2, my finest earthly blessing is. My beautiful rose, I hear the wind blowing through the trees as it whistle a tune to the heavenlies, as a response wave offerings of affection to share in this relationship, love, connection. With the light of life shining brightly in the midst of all of this glorious dominion, with sparks above the cushions of this float 
as the nightlight awaits her chance to elope. As angels gather with excitement in their wings to bring forth praises of new songs to sing. As the elements tune in, as sensitive as the eye, to embrace this sphere of romance from on high. With bells of joy in the form of raindrops, with flakes as fans all gathering nonstop, to join in this wonderful occasion of view as he breathes his breath and makes one, two. Then suggest to the one out of whom is the other to address as he would, being the love of the lover. Father, my heart is satisfied, my mind does not oppose. My souls, they call her my beautiful rose. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. A love story, I'm sure you might agree. Of a prayer I prayed strictly for me. For the love of my life in Christ to be. My Eve, my wife, created for me. Upon this request, my Heavenly Father truly blessed. And sent my wonderful mate when I release my distress. The Lord took my request and gave me heaven's best. And this is my love story and how it began. From the first time I needed a very special hand. Actually, it was the entire body which involved this special plan. She most gracefully accepted. And from that time on, she has been strength to my life to help keep me going strong. My thoughts have been traced and my needs outlined and continue outpouring of a love so divine. Sacred is her emotions, understanding is her ways. Her compassionate evils shorten her nights. Her anticipation of my return lengthen her days. As one lands on the moon, my breath is taken away. As the father gave his son he gave his best. I can say truly, as for a mate, he gave me no less. Bone of my bone, Vera, flesh of my flesh. On account of your love, these statements are written to make you aware of your untiring efforts to let us know you care. Your patience with our faults just blows the dust away that happens to accumulate day by day. Your gifts are more value than store could price. So we're not trying to return them, but to let you know they're so nice. We appreciate your food which feeds our souls as well. We appreciate your cleaning, which leaves such a fresh smell. We appreciate your guidance, which keeps us all in one. We appreciate your labor on your job, which has just begun. So these are just a few thoughts approved from above. To let you know we appreciate you on account of your love. Chapter 3, The Glory of Birth is. What is a mother? This question stands most definitely to be shared with all. Of the true definition of a mother, her role and her call. To begin this extraordinary biography... And to set the record straight, one thing a mother is not is just a female with children and a mate. But a mother, regardless of married, single, old, or young, is one who has accepted the awesome responsibility of raising children. When rising in the morning, her prayers, Father, condition my mind. For the task that's set before me, I have to be loving, gentle, and kind. A mother will be up early and the last one in bed for making sure her house is tidy 
after all her children's been fed. A mother would give up her last dime, her last drink, her last piece of food. She would work late into the midnight just so her children would make it through school. A mother will be that voice between quarrels day and night to make sure her children get along even when they fuss and fight. A mother will go way out of her way to bring joy to her home. She would even sometimes feel her work is all alone. She would cry at times, mourn others, and sometimes just glaze while taking note of all of her blessings. Through God, she is amazed. A mother is the most precious maid of all. A mother is God's gift to man. A mother is a joy in every child's life. A mother is the completion of God's heavenly plan. A mother is strong and endures to the end. A mother will be that long lost friend. A mother holds the keys to success. A mother is God's beauty at its best. A mother is the right of a child's wrong. A mother is the father's strength that makes him strong. A mother is love in agape way. A mother's peace to help us to stay. A mother's joy being sunshine in the rain. A mother's long suffering in the midst of pain. A mother's gentleness with an extraordinary touch. A mother's meekness that makes her just too much. A mother's goodness as she teaches her young. A mother's faith which makes the unseen fun. A mother's temperance which keeps her in subjection. A mother is all of the above through Christ her perfection. What is a mother? A father's glory. In writing a proverb, autobiography, short story, or a poem, is first to reveal the truth of the matter before they read it wrong. Not for one minute or second, or even for a thought of day. Should you believe a father creates a child in this world and then he's on off his way? But listen to me and listen good. I got to tell you the truth. A father is the most important man in the world because he's the guide to the future. And what it takes to be a father comes only from the father himself. So whatever you plan to become a fatherly man, make sure it's from the word he left. Now father, regardless his greatest day, his glory from the start of his day, is when he seeks the father, the father of fathers, to lead and guide his way. A father's glory is the fellowship he has between his wife and family. A father's glory is the respect they have when they honor his dignity. A father's glory is the job he works every day thinking ahead. A father's glory, though the bills need pain, looks forward to his own bed. A father's glory is the strength it takes to make it through the struggles of life. A father's glory is the sternness he has in training up his children to come out right. A father's glory, even though at times no one understands the pressure he's going through. A father's glory is the victory he's won when it seems no one could help him make it through. A father's glory is the joy he receives seeing his children grow up and make it in life. A father's glory is the remembrance of the pain it took to make it through the night. A father's glory is to feel like a father and for others to think highly of him as well. A 
Father's glory is a path he made so his children and family won't fail. A father's glory is the father's glory when he see the father in a father. And oh, what a joy it brings to the world to see the father standing up and being fathers. A father's glory. Except you come as a little child. The Bible says, Suffer the little children to come unto him, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now this statement was made by the Lord Jesus Christ to set the record straight about my presence. Gifts and callings are without repentance, whether you're in or out of the womb. And I can truly say to the world this day, that I too have a time to bloom. Out in the world to let others know that babies also have a job to do. For even Jeremiah was anointed inside her to preach the gospel, that's true. So come on babies and all little children, let's get on a job for the father. To show that old devil, though we're more innocent than ever, Watch out for who he bothers A precious heritage The Bible says that children are an heritage of the Lord And the fruit of the womb is his reward As the arrows are in the hand of a mighty man Happy is the man that have his puller full of them The wife shall be as a fruitful vine By the sides of thine house Thy children like olive plants all round about. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, and to be a joyful mother of the hour. The just man walketh after his integrity, his children are blessed after him. A virtuous woman who can find her children arise call her blessed in their praises so suffer the little children to come unto me unto him and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven for God has a purpose and a plan for their lives and we are a great part of their presence a child is a blessing a child is this God's gift to mankind, a very precious heritage. A message of hope. There is a story in the Bible of one named Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. Though their faith was shaken tremendously, in Jesus they still came out. Job was stricken with the sickness unto death. All his friends, including his wife's faith, had left. But Job suffered it through and was obedient as well and received double of the things he lost because his faith didn't fail. Abraham and Sarah was promised a promise from one who never lied but was asked to sacrifice that promise, or in other words, for it to die. But knowing God is a just God, and definitely knows what he's doing, then found a ram in the bush, then God was ready to work through it. These are the words of a handsome son who left this earth by express to allow my family to see how God is truly about to bless. There is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing, I say, that's too hard for my God. For he made and created everything that is, and he knows the work of his job. 
for something we see is an end of life is truly only the beginning. And in God, keep your trust and faith in Him, and you will always come in winning. So family, my words to you is stay in the word to cope. And in Jesus, you will find everything you need. And that is your message of hope. Lift it in glory. Though life has taken its toll on my flesh, I now thank the Lord my soul is at rest. And to those of you which it seems to I've left behind, to my children, family, and friends who've been so kind, I leave you for memory the example I have set to live for Jesus Christ, which is the best I've seen yet. Of the things I have accomplished, of all the Lord had for me to do, just as Christ was the center of my life, just trust Him and He'll see you through. For the sun will yet shine and night will become day. And with faith in my Lord Jesus Christ, no doubt he will make a way. Though trouble may be on every side, yet not in distress. Perplexed and not understanding why, but not despaired yet. Persecution will come for a time to be tried yet not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed because of the life my God is making. For the agreement that I once signed to live for him unto death, no matter what comes or go, even if it meant my health. So don't be discouraged and above all, don't give in to anything that the devil gives to bring your life to an end. For the chance to serve the Lord has been given to all from thee. For when the time comes, when your life is done, and you too can be lifted in glory. The next poem is I'm Gone Home. I'm Gone Home. And I'm Gone Home. <laughs> Say it again. The time has come, finally at last, that I am gone home, and I am so glad to be with my Lord and Savior too, to rest in peace and wait for you. For we know we can't live on earth always, but we do have the choice to look to the brighter days, the days of peace without any sorrow, the days of joy with no worries of tomorrow. The days of sunshine where there is no night Because I'll be with him in his glorious light With the angels I'll sing a wonderful praise With songs of hallelujah in a choir with no age And you can rest assured that this is the place to be So if I were you, I would really want to be me So happy, so peaceful so joyous and scot-free in the presence of my Lord and Savior to be with him eternally. I'm gone home. This poem is, it's all right to cry. The sun refused to open her eyes. The moon ran off in sorrow to hide. The earth could not withstand the pain. So he quaked and quaked and did much rain. For the Creator's Son had come and gone, and a way that only the worst would lead. But by their reaction to this great day of sorrow, caused many of his accusers to truly believe. Jesus' death brought life to those left behind, leaving us an example of the life to find. And once we found that life for ourselves, we become the example for the ones that are left. There's a way of expression, a way of release, the many hurt and pain from your decease. But God has a way of taking one and making two. 
So it's all right to cry. It will help bring you through. For on the next day the sun did shine on all those left behind. The moon took its place and the earth was at peace. For in their moment of sorrow, they heard in pain were released. Because it's all right to cry. Words that mean so much. There are two words which makes life to live. The second accompanies the first, for they both are created to give. They both have five letters, which gives them equal responsibility, as we all have five senses to touch, taste, smell, hear, and see. To taste of his goodness, which strengthened us to stand, to smell of the aroma of the best break bread ever made, to hear of the most glorious sound any musicians ever played, to bring into view what we all were profoundly created to be. And this is the cross where the price was paid for you and me. Where the tears of sorrow are turned into joy. Where the aches and pains hurt no more. Where lonely nights are turned into days. Where the fear of loneliness is wiped away. Where anger, bitterness, envy, and strife are all washed away in the blood of Christ. Where these two most important words meet together to combine into one, which means forever. Now here's the equation. Five minus five equals four, and that is the truth. For his birth minus his death gave us life between the two. I present these two words to all with compassion in their hearts. For we all must encounter the two in order to have a brand new start. Words that mean so much. Chapter five, the leader's goal. I have a dream. Now these are the words I will quote it one day of a dream that was priced only a few could pay. To stand before millions and proclaim such words as we shall overcome to the rejected of this world. With the ideal of nonviolence to pursue this plan, most people wondered what was in this man. Withstanding the anguish of homes being burned, the innocent being killed as a so-called lesson to be learned. With hatred at his back and rejection on both sides, he kept his faith upward for the mark of the high prize. When his family decided that the task was just too much and for Martin to let go before he outran his luck. And when death met Martin Luther at his own front door and said, Martin Luther King Jr., don't sneeze no more. So at this time in Martin's life, a decision had to be made. For Martin Luther King Jr. to pay the price the Lord God had made. To fear him, which is man, who could destroy only the body. Or believe in Jehovah Jireh, who is God Almighty. Well, the story tells of itself, and the results are at hand. Of the dream of one Martin Luther King Jr. for God's people to reach the promised land. I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream, so he said. And now we do celebrate the dream that he had. To follow the leader. If the leaders follow the leader, the leading will be led. If the hairmasters follow the hairmaster, then hairmasters will be the hairmaster. Time and strength to them that are strong. For each wrong, there's a right 
for right is the evidence of wrong. Opposition is the weapon aimed directly at the head. But faith is its opposition that subdues it instead. Value is the worth of any element in life, but priceless is the value of your life in Christ. To follow the Lord. The job of a foreman. The job of a foreman is one that is in charge to keep track of the duties, some easy and some hard. The job of a foreman is one that must know the incoming supplies, part and quantities, not to mention the unusable materials. The job of a foreman is one that must see the problems that arise with the machines and amongst the employees. The job of a foreman is one who must care for his job is to help others keep their jobs, not to mention his own welfare. Black History Poem. Black History is month celebrated annually each and every year to bring back the memories of famous black people to cheer. It's a month of history to let us know how the black race is going, its successes and achievements, and how it's steady growing. From Christmas Attic, a patriarch of the Revolutionary War, to Frederick Douglass, an abolitionist who fought to even the score. From Sojourner Truth, a leading woman who urged the freedom to vote, to Harriet Tubman of the Underground Railroad, known as the Black Moses of Hope. From Booker T. Washington, a most famous Negro in America. To Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, first doctor to perform a successful heart operation. For Marion Anderson, just one of the world's greatest contraltos. To Shirley Chisholm, first black woman in Congress to show women are not just shadows. From W.E.B. Du Bois, civil rights leader and founder of the NAACP Gold. To Matthew Henson, a famous explorer and first person to reach the North Pole. From the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., a Nobel Peace Prize winner, to Robert Weaver, the first black cabinet member. And these are just a few of the blacks who have taken a stand to move with the flow of the spirit of unity and to complete God's heavenly plan. Black History Report. Black women on the move. When God created earth since the beginning of time, he created both male and female in his image and after their kind. To love and marry and become as one. To enjoy pleasures of life and really have lots of fun. But somehow or another, to the man belief, the woman just weren't very much in society. The job was to be there when he got home or when he needed excitement, when he fell all alone. But as you can see, the women are taking a stand, not just for competition or to outshow the man, but just to let him see and through God to prove that the black women in Christ are now on the move. I had a dream. I had a dream one day to be a superstar on a basketball court shooting near and far. With thousands of lights shining brightly on me, the fans all cheering, even the babies trying to see. As I take my man to the hoop, just as a speedy spud well, or a fast break slam dunk, just like Dominique Dussel. As we come back down the other end, my defense being at its best, causing traps by being clever, just like player Doc River, giving no slack or any less. Well, some years ago, I happened to give up on my dream by taking drugs and alcohol, making me do the wrong things. Trying to be cool by skipping school, thinking this is really fun. Not knowing all the time, 
I was just losing my mind, skipping out on my own dream. How dumb. So now I just reminisce as I shoot hoops in my own backyard of how I used to play and practice every day, really, really working very, very hard to prepare myself for the upcoming season that I may be the best that I could be. Not knowing all the time, later on down the line, these drugs and alcohol will hinder me. Well, so much for the dream. And it really was a good dream. But thank God, like the prodigal son, I came to myself and left those drugs alone and came on back home to my heavenly father who restored my health. Chapter 6, Maximizing Your Potential. Success. Success is reaching that ultimate goal of holding reality in a handwritten scroll, caring always for each one of your moves, changes that will help oneself to improve. Emptying your mind of all negative thoughts, seeing the impossible as though they are not. Standing on the true word of God and no less. Now that's what I call a real success. Now in order to have success, you have to make a sacrifice. In this great world today, one must plan their life. In order to succeed this plan, you must make a sacrifice. With a willing mind and a sincere heart to do all that you can. To work in diligent, faithful, and dedicated to help succeed your plan. Sacrifice. Then to make the goal of yours reach its total peak. When you feel like giving up because you are so weak. Sacrifice. When it seems like no one knows the pain you're going through and all the things you've given up to make your dreams come true. Sacrifice. And when you're in need of that perfect example and how he made it to the top through all of his pain and his suffering and did it non-stop, he sacrificed. Now we're at the final two poems of the book. Because I'm a winner. You have to say this to yourself. Because I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm determined to pay the price. With success is my goal of any position that I hold through all pain, suffering, and strife. To meet situations Face to face, circumstances, doubt, cast away. To fight the good fight of faith with motivated efforts to stay. Ambitious, energetic, to help proceed the plan. Not procrastinating the thought in mind, but redeeming the time at hand. With honesty as my policy and knowledge driven by wisdom. Not selling for less, but striving for the best to reach God's heavenly kingdom. To be at peace of mind through all that I do. With patience as my business partner until my dreams come true. Because I am a winner. Ahead of problems that matter. For when discouragement comes through the lack of funds and all friends seem to scatter. Prepared to meet any challenge that seems to come my way. To overcome victoriously, no matter what they say. Because I am a winner. With Christ as my center. To lead and guide my every stride. Because I am a winner. <laughs> Make the most of your day. 
How to make the most of your day is being consistent in every way. First, you must prepare yourself for the activities of the day. So in order to do it most effectively, the first thing to do is to pray. Commit your thoughts and works to the Lord that they might be established, that he may bring them in agreement with his will and you can proceed to have them. Exercise your mind by reading something spiritually good and your body as well because you should. But to do this and not to be in a rush, you must go to bed earlier so the earlier you can get up. And while you're at it, make time for meditation for this is to guarantee to enhance your consecration. Manage your responsibilities according to the clock and approach each act your creative best, doing it nonstop. Plan ahead some pleasure time to balance out your life and make each day as bright as you can to keep away the strife. Keep records of all transactions of the day and photocopies as well. And tackle first the more difficult task, but quit while you're ahead so tomorrow you will last. Doing two things at once can also extend your day and reward your accomplishments in one of your favorite ways. When at times it seems you have nothing else to do, take inventory and check your list all the way through. Make the most of your day. This book is dedicated to my Heavenly Father, 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 in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. To my lovely wife, Prophetess Vera D. Nathaniel, to my wonderful mother, Gracie Nathaniel Bond. And also to the one who helped in making this vision come to pass, the producer of my writings, Gloria Oliver. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3. 16 and 17. May the grace of God be multiplied as you meditate upon the words herein. Yeah.